Hey guys, so today is October 1st, 2012. Last year, with the haunted house, I gave a walkthrough on October 1st. So I thought I'd do that again this year, just to give a little progress update. Um, show what I still have to do, show what's done, uh, brag about the good stuff, and maybe take suggestions on what I could improve on. So uh, I'm gonna give a walkthrough right now. Keep in mind, nothing's finished. There isn't even one scene that's completely done yet. So, um, so everything's still a work in progress. Um, this year, if you're new and haven't been following, the haunt is divided into three thematic areas. Um, I'll get to the second two when I get to them, but the first one is called Uncle Bubba's Barbecue. And it's centered around an old farm that was raising pigs for the slaughter and selling them and making them into barbecue and, you know, the slaughterhouse and all that good stuff. But then all the pigs died off, and so they, long story short, used humans. So, uh, this is the Cannibal Butcher Haunt. This is the facade of it. We're gonna have stuff on either side to block it off and this is just an emergency slash actor pathway. And you can get back through here. This is the barn, um, the first scene that you enter. Um, there's a lot of wood in here. I'm working on some signs and got the lighting out. But uh, back in this area, we're gonna have a chicken coop looking type setup. And then you're on the corner and this is gonna be what looks like a chicken coop but then an actor can rush in and scare you here. An actor also has the opportunity to use this drop panel right here. It says find meats just disguised in this wall so they can hold it up and then drop it down. Um, and then we'll have like animals and stuff in that actual, well fake animals I should say that. Um, like fake chickens if I can make them and maybe a fake pig if I can do that. Um, and then they'll exit the barn. I have a fence in here with some uh, dried branches. This I have to paint. This is the entrance to the slaughterhouse, or well, we're kind of in like an alleyway between the barn and the slaughterhouse, but this I still have to paint and I need to build a doorway here. Um, we have like a little gut table here. I just got some coats hanging on there for now though. Um, come into the slaughterhouse, got a table here. This door into the actor access and emergency exit pathway, which just leads right out. Um, this room is going to be fogged heavily and then I have back up in that corner a blue strobe light so it's got a little blue tint and it's really foggy so you can only see like three feet in front of you. Um, and I'll have of course gory stuff on the table I'm just using it as a workbench for now. Um, and then you come into here. This scene I'm still trying to figure out what to do with. I know I'm going to fill it in with props somehow um, and it, it's going to be one of the smaller scenes sort of a transition but I have these pants in here now. And then they will come out here, um, another opportunity to exit. This scene I haven't even started on yet. I just have this um, one piece together. It's three pieces and a door. It looks like a shack, creepy old shack, and there's the top. Um, that'll be over on this side to block it off, and point of reference, that's where you came from. And then this wall here will be blocked off with something, I'm not exactly sure what yet, but I'm gonna have like corn stalks and then cut off the tops of, or some just shrubs of trees and bushes that are coming up, make it look outdoorsy and vegetated. And then the last scene of Uncle Bubba's barbecue is the barbecue shack where they're selling the barbecue. Push through here, got a sign up. Um, this scene will be lit by strobe on the other side of these boards here, so I'll show you that when we get there, but it's gonna look really cool with the light just popping through there. Around this corner, we got a bloody torso, Coca-Cola thing, um, the menu, lots of good stuff. And then there's the window, and you're around the corner, there's an actor in here with a skill saw with the blade removed, of course, that's going to terrorize you, and there's the strobe too. So coming through all these boards here, and we'll just scare you. And then they pop out through this window here once you're in the transition alley. But I'm not gonna go there yet. I'm gonna explain the next haunt. So part two is called Body Repairmen. It's set in the stereotypical home of the hillbilly in West Virginia, Appalachia. Um, the basic backstory is they're hillbillies, so they're deformed. Um, they just so happen to own an auto repair shop, so that's where it's set. But the plot is that um, they are ashamed of their deformities, so they capture people who are undeformed, cut off their good body parts, and use them to replace their own. Um, be it through masks of flesh, like Leatherface, or, um, or actually like surgically removing them. 
and sewing them onto themselves. So with that said, first scene we come out and we see the facade of Charlie's Auto Repair. That's what it's called. Um, got a garage door here. Brought in some branches the other day. That's one of the more recent things I did. Um, and here's the scare I was talking about with the second scare from the circular saw actor. So here's the facade. Looking nice. Um, this is actually a functional bathroom in the shop, so I'm just going to close the door and then detail paint along the side. Of it. Here, this is a little sneak actor door um, to get in through, basically cut through this portion of the hunt. Um, and then you go in here. I'm going to put more trees up in here like I did over yonder, but I haven't done that yet because I want to be able to open the window sometimes. So the first scene in the actual repair shop, we have some shelves on the left, and then we got this cool looking guy over here, um, hard hat area, and then we have this fence. There's two sections, there's one here and then one back behind it. Um, and they make a good rattle when you shake it. So uh, it should be good for an actor scare. And then also back behind these shelves, this is a good actor spot too because we'll have a light on this and a light down there. So that's where people are going to focus their view. And if there's someone back behind the shelves, they're likely not going to pay attention to them. Um, got a rusty pipe up running through here. Turn around. Here is the other metal fence. Pipe goes into the wall. And then this, I haven't really fully organized the props yet, but I have a lot of props in here. Got this table, I'm just using it to store my paint for now, but that will be organized and looking creepy. Um, lots of nasty old stuff, um, old tools, a microwave. Um, this is a homemade cabinet type deal with the drawers on it. It's supposed to look like it, but it's just a frame made out of wood. And then come through here, and this door may be open or closed, but if it's closed, you know, it has the slats on there so we could put a light behind it and have it shining through and look real creepy. Push it open, and there's these pipes in the hallway. I need to add more, especially on this wall, but they're just PVC that we rubbed foam insulation on and then spray painted, so it's a nice, cheap effect. Walk down. Back here, I will have a door that's painted the same color as this. It's just so I can, I have it open so I can get to electrical to rig lighting and sound. So you come down here. There's this guy up here. I still need to put a mask on him and a light shining up there. So that'll be cool. You'll be looking up and if I have enough actors, I can have one back in the electrical corridor. Just open the door and come out and scare you while you're looking up. Push through these flaps. It's a little dark in this scene, but essentially, here, that's a little better. All you need to know is there's this creepy old 70s um, fake wood paneling here. That's a better view that I just distressed with white spray paint. And then there's this guy chill in here. Um, I have a, thing, a little spotlight on him now, but it ran out of battery, so I need to replace it. But when it was on, it cast a great shadow down that like it would hide an actor perfectly under the table. Um, this thing come through here. That is the back of the garage door, so don't worry about that yet. This is another drop panel. Slides up. It's nice and hidden because it looks like just a shelf. And then it's rigged with just a gate latch, so the actor pulls out and it drops down, and there can be an actor that scares. Um, and then here's what I was talking about with the pipes. I haven't painted these yet, so it's just, you know, I just use the great stuff, foam insulation, smear it on there with gloves, obviously, and then it dries up and looks pretty cool. Um, in here, there's a metal fence. Actor can be off to this side. And then this here is hopefully going to be the housing for what looks like the hood of a car that can have lights and horn come on and beep and scare you real good. So uh, if I get that done, fingers crossed, it should be good, but it's one of the bigger projects for this year, so I'm not going to hold my breath on it. But uh, this is the back side of the garage door. I just have an exclamation point painted on there now until I get it covered because I'm going to put plywood over it, but uh, for now there's screws sticking out on it, so I just want to remind myself to be careful. Um, so from there you go into the third and final section of the haunt. It's called Unearthed Into the Cellar. The plot is it's a big basement, I don't know, industrial, residential, but it's a cellar, basement, whatever, um, where there's serial killers and they're hiding out in there waiting for their prey. So uh, this is a pretty fun haunt. I think it's gonna be really fun once we get into the good detailing and stuff um, in here. Now I have the same fake wood paneling that I used in the scene with the little guy on the table. 
um, but just on the lower half. What I'm going to do on the upper half is put plaster all over it um, to look like the old foundation of plaster. You know, I'm going to go in and detail it like crazy. I'm going to cut some holes in there and put in the lath strips so it looks like it was founded on um, just a bunch of lath that was tacked up and then the plaster was plastered over and then eroded away. Um, come in here. This is the start of what's going to be a staircase. This one's actually going to be raised up to the top of the panel, come down and the landing will be like right at this height and then another flight down here and I'm going to do something to block people off so they don't, you know, walk up because that would be dangerous. Um, and then here there's some shelves and another drop panel. Um, I can't bah, show from this side too well. I can't get my hand any further up, but uh, it'll look about the same color as it and uh, I might go in and detail it, but I don't think it's that big of a deal because there will be stuff on these shelves blocking people off. And that's a good loud one, so that's a really good scare. And that's just a gate latch too, as you can see. Um, and then I'm probably going to do like a small furnace or something over here just because, you know, it's a basement. you got to have a furnace. Um, down this hallway. This is the scene where the killer has supposedly set up like a makeshift bedroom. Um, just because he has to stay somewhere. So. This guy, I mean, it doesn't look that realistic, so I probably got to beef it out and stuff. Um, so I'll, I'll get to that. Here, this is what I plan to head for with the lath strips that it looks like the plaster was put over the lath. This is actually a drop panel mounted. It's like a bunch of lath mounted on a two by two frame that I just built like the standard drop panel. And an actor will get you from behind and it'll be like lit from behind so the light will be coming through. But uh, that's why I'm doing it over there so it doesn't look suspicious if there's only one. And then this is going to look like a walkthrough closet. Here's the drop panel that I just showed you with the shelves. Um, it'll look like a walk-in closet because, you know, they got to keep clothes down there too. And then an actor can come out of there and get you. Um, walk through here. These were great creepy old shells. I'm glad I found these. Um, all this is pretty much just a workbench and storage now. I mean, I got some props sitting on there, but a lot of it's just storing stuff for now. And then this is a door into the um, actor access pathway for here. Um, and it's actually a real door, so it looks nice. I'm going to have fabric flaps coming across here. This is just, um, the black is in just to cover more holes like these. I still got to do. I got them cut, but I haven't mounted them in yet. Um, and then I just put curtains up so it looks like a window. You know, in a basement, the window would be up high. And then this is like the creepy demonic doll room because, you know, they use the dolls to worship Satan or something creepy. I mean, it doesn't have to make that much sense. It's a freaking haunted house. So, um, got these guys started up on here. Lots of creepiness. Have more on this shelf and then you push through here and you see the super bloody demon doll thing his legs stapled there walk through here this is the classic you know horror movie scenario where you're in the basement and there's this slat wood slats on either side um i'm gonna have light streaming through these slats and no light source in here so the light looks like it's coming in Maybe if I can get another fogger, I'll have it fog in, in here a little bit. And I'm going to build a doorway out of the slats into this next scene. So that's why this doesn't have slats yet. Um, this is going to be like a washroom in the basement. This is where the basement really turns to creepiness. Um, gonna ha I got a sink here. This is going to be like a workbench, so raised up like two or three feet. All these walls I still got to paint, so don't worry about that yet. Um, and then you go into the cave. and. Uh, this is essentially what's called monster mud, or, well, if you're a haunter, you probably know that, but for those who aren't haunters, it's monster mud. It's, you just put up um, chicken wire, and then you dip burlap into a mixture of half paint, half drywall compound, put it up. Um, I started on it, but I, it was my first time using it, so what I have to do is I probably have to put more wood framework back behind the chicken wire because what I was doing was just nailing into that and I don't have anywhere to nail in here. So that's what I gotta do before I finish this scene at least. Um, and then this is gonna be just an actor door back to work the slat drop panel. And then the final scene which I haven't set up walls yet for is um, this is gonna be a sewer. So if you can imagine this is like the plaster look. Um, all these, these are going to be bricks. I'm going to have plaster going in between them so they look like real bricks. 
Um, it's going to look like an archway. There's going to be lots of crazy archways. That's what these are for. It's just hard to, you know, explain when it's not built. But I can tell you it's going to be a freaking amazing scene. Another skill saw, possibly an air hammer in there if I don't find anywhere else to use that. So, um, so yeah, I think that's, that's it for now. Um, be sure to check back as we get closer to Halloween. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, go check out the YouTube channel. It's Mini Moose 1750, so M-I-N-I-M-O-O-S-E 1750 over on YouTube. Um, I got I do daily haunt build vlogs every day I build, so um, that's that. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave me a comment. Let me know, uh, especially fellow haunters, let me know what's going on or uh, what I could do to improve. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Um, so uh, that's it. I'll see you guys later. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.